What's going on, y'all, man? We got us a special individual today, man. I told y'all, man, we was coming with these interviews, man. And, uh, yeah, man, I ain't going to do, you know, I, I'm going to just be doing minimal talking. I'm going to just be asking certain questions. I'm going to this, this, this is, you know, my guests are going to be taking over the flow. Straight so, up. Man. With that being the case, man, introduce yourself to the people for those who don't know. Man, if y'all don't know me, man, and if you don't, man, come on now, you might be spitting a blue lie, you feel me? But it's your nigga Rock and Love, man. I'm from South Sacramento, 29th Street, Goran Block, Crip Gang. Some people call it 916, but we call it 914 over here, man. You feel me? But what it do, though? Hey, yeah, yeah, man. So, you know, you know, I, I definitely wanted this interview because, you know, for sure, man, uh, I, I, I love your energy because... You know what I'm saying? Man, I appreciate you, know? you, man. I appreciate you, man. Yeah, man. So I like, I got to get cuz on, man. I got to, you know what I'm saying, uh, chop it up. Because I'm saying I appreciate your time because I know you a busy man. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I be busy a lot, man. I got a lot of stuff going on every day. It seemed like, you know, when I wasn't doing nothing, as soon as you get popular, boy, you ain't got no time to rest your head on no pillow no more. You feel me? So. Yeah, I definitely be busy, man. But, hey, man, when it's good people like you to send that positive energy, I will stop for a second to show some love anytime, man. You know what time it is. For real, cuz. So, you know what I'm saying? So we're going to get into a little bit of your background. So we, uh, so can you tell the people, man, how did you grow up? Man, I grew up, man. I, I grew up in South Sacramento, man. I was young, man. My mom, my mom is black. My dad is white. I grew up in South Sacramento. My mom. Uh, I got a cold situation here, man. I was six years old. My mom and dad beat my little sister to death, man. My, my little sister, Deneva Monique Beecham. Everybody that's in Sacramento knows about it. You know what I'm saying? My mom and dad was abused when they was young. You feel me? My mom, it wasn't my real biological father, this Caucasian. My mom married another brother. Now, this brother, we wasn't his kid, so he took upon himself to put his hands on us, even his own kids. And he killed my little sister. He beat her 300 times with a belt buckle, left 300 slashes on her, killed her. I watched her take her last breath and hit rigor mortis. So at six years old, I already had a patch of gray hair on my head. I saw too much. You feel me? And uh, from there, I went from group home to group home, foster home to foster home, CYA to CYA to prison to prison. And here I am today. It's been a long road, man. You feel me? And uh, that's basically what happened to me. I got bounced around like a bag of fruit, unstable, you know. And uh, Sacramento was great till I hit about, I don't know, about 19 or 20. You know, game banging was really serious back then when I was young, really bad. You know, it was basically us garden blocks against Metal View and Oak Park. It's been that way, notorious for a long time. And, uh, I shot at a certain individual in Oak Park because he tested me. I couldn't go to school because I had a lot of problems. So I was trying to get my GED to uh, 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 New Dimensions. And that's in the middle of Oak Park. So I was trying to get my high, uh, uh, GED. And it was just I was going to school with a gauge in my pocket, having to fight them all the time. So it just got real bad, man. I got my mom house shot up. I got shot, I got stabbed, and it just got real bad, man. So after a while, I started saying, you know what, man, I'm going to get into this martial arts real quick. So I got into the martial arts, man, and that kind of, like, lifted me out of Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And I went down 100 miles away from Sacramento. It's called Butte County, Chico, California. So I resigned it there, had my first child, started getting into acting, went up to a fifth-degree black belt, started getting into the movies, just doing my own thing because I saw that when you are a brother, as us Africans is, there's always somebody in the background that you're not getting the money that you're supposed to be getting. And it's not a familiar face. I don't want to come up here and say something bad or make it look like I'm racist or anything like that. But it's always not a face that looks like your face that's taking your money. Mm hmm that's and great. you're doing all the hard work. So I thought from being a young person, can I, can I get the meal ticket being independent? So it took a long time because I had no help. You know, when you're in the gang, everybody trying to eat. So nobody really got time. You homies. But if they ain't around, you on your own, you know. So I was basically on my own. 
and it it was hard. It took me. I should have been out the music game ten years ago, twenty years ago. But I started kind of late because I kept going to prison. I did sixteen years in prison. Tracy Folsom, Old Folsom, New Folsom, you know, Vacaville, Salinas, you know, all types of crazy places. I've been locked up everywhere, man. So it's just all I was doing is catching time. As you can see, my face I'm padded everywhere. So I was basically a torpedo in prison. So I was stabbing people, catching time like a dummy. And it took me a long time to grow up, to get out of there and stop being a follower and be a leader. That's real. That's real. Yeah, I was. Yeah, as we go along, I'm definitely going to get a, a, a little bit more into that. So for those of people who don't know, because, you know, I got followers from all over the states, out of the country. Yeah. What's life like living in SAC? <laughs> Man. Let me see. How can I say this, man, in a positive manner, man? Uh, um, what's life like living in my in my born and raised home, Sacramento, California, man? Sacramento, I will say it is great living in Sacramento, but you are who you hang around. Some people, we can't control where we're from. We're a product of our environment. And if you put us in a nice place, we'll be nice. If you put us in an unstable environment, we're going to be unstable. So when I was young in Sacramento, there was lots of gangs. So that's negative energy. So you are who you hang around, even if you ain't gang banging. So when I, I don't know how it is now. I've been gone for the last eight to 10 years. I've heard it's got worse. Um, but when I was there, it was very unstable. Um, can't trust nobody. Uh, it's pretty much the same as it is then as it is now. I'm just not there to verify for it, man. So, but that's because it was the people that I hung around with. Now I'm from South Sacramento. If I would have drove in a car and went to North to the North area where all the white folks lived at and lived off of El Camino, I might've had a different life. But I chose to live in a bad neighborhood. My mom lived in Oak Park. I'm from 29th Street. So I got beat up every day because I'm from 29th Street. My brother's a blood. So no one helped me. They just watched me like, damn, you want to be from 29th Street, Rocket? So this is what you're going to get. Your whole family blood. So why ain't you one of them? I said, I don't like that color, man. My big homie over there, cuz, on the gang, though. So I got to rock with these niggas, cuz. So I got beat up a lot every day. So I picked up a gun and started shooting and then it just got wild. Man. I don't want to be saying too much. It just got wild. And then, you know what I'm saying? I had to build a path. I dropped a kid. I didn't want none of my kids. I've been a good dad. I made sure none of my kids were gang members. And for a gang member, that's usually doesn't exist. They usually spread that poison to their child. So I already knew I was living a poisonous life. I want to stop that, come independent, have my own money. I don't need a pale face in the background stealing my money, corrupting me and my kids to grow up and become a rotten seed, nothing but a gang member like me. So I had to build a successful path. I started coming out with hoodies way back, probably around when Banging on Wax first came out with Red Rum. Big June, all these big time rappers. I took a rag out my pocket one day in the 80s and I said, you know what? I think I'm going to put this on a hoodie. My wife told me, you're stupid. This is never going to happen. I said, get the fuck out the room. Man. I'm on some bang banging shit right now. So I said, yeah, you're going to have to go real, real quick, man, on the homie cue ball. My nigga, I'm on some right now. So I took it out, put it up on the hood, started sewing it, came back about six hours. My wife saw it. She started crying in tears. She said, man, I didn't think you was going to do this with it. It looks like a store did it. And I said, yeah, but it's not a China print. China doesn't support African-Americans. So I said, I'm going to do something that we can all show unity. Bloods, Crips, Mexicans, white folks, all of us. So I came out with a hoodie jacket. And that's when I blew up, man. I had the Bloods, the Crips, the North Days, the Southsiders, the White Boys. Everybody came to me. And that's how my name and who I am today. Sitting fat, living ghetto fabulous like I never thought I could before. I said, this isn't, this ain't going to happen. I think I put the jacket out. I had to hire 20 people in one month. And none of us use a sewing machine all by hand. 
So it gets real deep, man. Like you see my clothing line right now, it's all sewn. No print, no China print, none of that. All hand sewn. My own shit in the background. It's money signs, $50 bills, 20s, 10s. That's all me, man. I hand sew everything my own self. When I do my videos, it's all me. I don't hire no one. I do my own backdrops. I do my own everything. Straight self-made with no help from nobody. That's dope. That's dope. So, you know what I mean? Just to take a, uh, just to keep on with that. So what type of mindset did it, um, did you have to, you know, conform in to be able to, you know, you know what, ain't nobody going to give me nothing. I just got to do all this on my own. If I want to eat, I got to do all the, what, what, what did that take for you? For you to get into it took for me i think me and you was just saying this a minute ago before we was up on here man it took for me because this is what it is man i was going to the streets like i was telling you my mom my dad was unstable i got out of group homes at 17 years old i went back to stay with my mom my mom was messing with me ripping me off make a long story short may she rest in peace because she is not here right now you know what I'm saying? My mom was messing with me. I think I might have pulled a gun on her. I was unstable. They sent me to jail. I get out at 18. They said, hey, man, you can't even be here. You feel me? So they said, you're going to have to get up out of here. Your mom don't want you here. I said, no, nah, I'm staying here. So I still stayed in sack. Went around trying to put my trust into my, to my homies. This is when I knew that being a follower don't get you nowhere. So I used to follow around my big homie every day. So I drunk when he drunk. I ate when he ate. I slept when he slept. I smoked weed when he slept. When he when when he smoked, so I started thinking like, damn, cause if this nigga ship sink, then I'm gonna sink with him, cause I'm riding with him. I don't got my own ship. I'm a grown man. I'm homeless on the street, but I don't got my own ship. No car, no shoes, no nothing. So I said, so so what am I gonna do? I need to wake up right now. Am I gonna be a follower, or am I gonna be a leader? And I said, I've been following for the 17 years. I ain't got nowhere. I'm still eating out the trash. So. It looks like that ain't working good for me. So I need to think of a way to be a leader. So as soon as I thought that, I waited a couple of months because, you know, most of us people that's in gangs, we put our hope into our gangs and family and hoping that when they see you doing bad and you losing weight and they'll give you a second chance, that don't always work. So I waited for that. I used to be a bodybuilder, a strong competition. I got sucked up. I was out on the street. And when I saw my same homies looking at me, that I wrote for, paid the rent, done stuff that I don't care to say on this internet. And when I watched them walk over me and they didn't care for me no more and they're looking at me laughing, that's when I got up and said, okay, Sacramento will leave you stranded at your end of the rope. And ain't nobody gonna care about you more than yourself. Really? So I better wake up now or get the dying, go get my pine box and just lay in it because this is what's coming next. So I got up from, from Sacramento and I swear on God in heaven, if there's a God, man, I don't know if there is. I don't know what we is, but I'm going to tell you like this, man. As soon as I got away from Sacramento, 24 hours, I started making money. Pre and I said, man, what's going on? And as soon as I went back to my own town, it was like, I went back in time. Everybody's still doing the same thing. I just went back to Sacramento three months ago. I shot a music video with C Dub, Chris West. He's from Oak Park. I used to represent him in music. <clears throat> he turned out to be a scam artist. He ripped me and Snoop Dogg off and put our music out behind without our permission. And I stopped doing music with him, but I went back and shot a video. I looked at my own homies. Look, I bought a few friends with me. My own homies just finna jack me, take my chain. Rocket, how much? Rocket, they were looking at my chain right here. Rocket, how much does that cost? I said, that costs about 40 racks right there, man. It's a hundred dollar bill, man. Just like my clothes right here, man. Each necklace I got on, man, costs about 20, 30 racks each, man. Oh, yeah, can we can we take a picture? I said, no, I'm not going to take that off for you to take a picture. Come on, man. Oh, they looking at me up and down like my own homies. If I didn't have some backup, they was going to jack me and kill me. Mm -hmm. So I said like this, I'm not going back home no more. I'm done. I saw it in their eyes. They jealous of me. And if you look on my YouTube and we get some chance, all y'all to the public, the whole world, please check me out. Now, look at all these people that's up on there. Thank you, Rock and Loke, for the C-Rag hoodie. Thank you, Rock and Load, for the C-Rag hoodie. I didn't charge one of these guys one penny. 
My clothing line goes for 450 a jacket. I didn't charge none of these guys one penny, tried to be a good homie. But when I start doing this, and I keep pulling out a dagger off my back and it keeps saying my homeboy's name on it, I mean, come on, man. Every, it's just a certain amount of time. I, I'm getting old, man. I can't just keep taking these daggers on my back, man. I'm gonna have to distance myself from you, man. So that's what I started doing. And it is true, the less friends you have, the less problems you have. Really? And it's <laughs> all time to wake up. As you can see my face, I'll come a little closer. Look at me, crip across my head, everything. It took a long time to pull my head out my butt. But, um, the less friends you have, mm -hmm. the less problems you have. When you only do family first, like we be rapping the song family first, motherfucker, so we moving nice. Yeah. When you're doing family first, you have the lock to your door, so no evil can come in unless you unlock the door and let it in yourself. So that's what I started to do now. I lock my door all the time. And when I see the evil, I don't even open up the door. So I ain't even got to worry about it no more. That's some real OG game for you, man. Speaking, speaking of the tats, I had a uh, sub that I had a question for you. Uh, what was the inspiration of the tattoos that's on your face? Um, the tats that's on my face, I think I went crazy. I look like a scribbled mark board. Uh, I suffer from PTSD post-traumatic stress syndrome order. I'm bipolar. I could be one, I feed off of people's emotions. So if I see someone looking funny, then I zone in and then I start acting funny. If I see the man come as a nice person, then I'd be nice. So I'm one of those type of people. So when my mom died, as you see, I got two teardrops. I got one from my mama. And then I got another teardrop from my homie, Big K9, Big Arthur from 29th Street. That was my big homie that jumped me into the set. So I shed a tear for him and tied it on my face. And then after that, I think I just went crazy. I'm just going to keep it real with you. I was in prison, stabbed up a couple people, didn't think I was coming home. So I said, you know what? I'm just going to tap my whole head up. So tied my whole head up, did about six years in the shoe program, finally let me out. I looked around like this. I was tatted up. Couldn't take nothing back no more. You feel me? When I got out of prison, everyone thought I lost my mind, and I did. But that doesn't mean that you're smart. Some of the smartest people is the craziest people on this planet. Craziest people on this planet is some of the smartest people that walk around. Kids you not. For real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it just took me a long time, man. I started doing my own thing. I saw that nobody cared about me. People stop in every once in a while to try to steal some of my spotlight. See if they can blow up off of me, but it don't work for them like it does me. So it just depends what it is, man. I see people. I've never gotten one thing. I've helped a lot of people. I'm not going to put no names out here. Blow your mind if I told you. You would have to research it. Is Rock and Look lying to me right now on live? I helped them. They have never done nothing for me, man. And I'm going to keep it real right now. A lot of people want to ask me because I'm going to show you all right now, man. Rock and Look, how you make your money? See? I can look, make his money like this, all self-made, man. You feel me? Talk real to bullshit, him. man. Yeah. You see? That real bullshit, man. Talk to me? him. None of, that, none, of that, none, of that, none of that bullshit. And see how I learned how to do that, man? As I look, swipe it on the ground. You feel yeah. me? I learned how to do that by not trusting nobody. That's why I got TMB down my face. Trust nobody. Because as soon as you start putting trust in somebody, you stop thinking about how to get money. And that's what makes the world go around is money, not conversation. That's the game right there for y'all, man. Yeah. Yes, agreed. Agreed. So, no, so yeah, man, you know, it just, it get, it get real grimy, man. You know what I'm saying? So it just, I learned how to do that. I got out here, got in the movies, man. And now I'm basically just sticking to my clothing line, but I'm not showing it no more on the internet, man. So, so speaking of that, uh, you know, we was talking about, you know, uh, Big K-9, rest in peace. What was your influence? What was your introduction? How did you, you know, you know, uh, uh, join you know what was your influence what was your introduction to that what to get jumped into the hood yeah mm -hmm. well 
when I was young, I was young, my big homie, he wasn't around at this time. I used to hang out with a certain amount of names. Well, you know that we can't be doing that. So, uh, yeah, we grew up in a certain place out, out kind of towards over White Rock Rancho. Was, a lot of us farm blocks used to meet up over there. We had functioned with some of the Richmond homies, you know what I'm saying, locking them in way back in the days. And uh, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't really game banging at this time. I think I was about 16 years old. I was wanting to game bang, but the homie said, you ain't ready yet. So one night, my cousin, she from Oak Park. So this dude was at the house. He had slapped her up in her mouth in the house. So I jumped up like, what you doing, cuz? He said, what you say to me, little nigga? So he stole on me. The dude stole on me. He got me. The blood nigga did. He got me. He gave me a concussion. I was fucked up in my house. So one of my big homies came. His name Bone, that's Bone, I love him. He the one to turn me into the renegade that I am today. Without him, I would have been a little bitch nigga. So I love him for bringing the hog out of the nigga. On the homie cue ball, I love you nigga. You know what I'm saying? He said, Rocket, what you doing up in here right now, man? Get your ass up right now, nigga. I said, why, what's going on, man? He said, yeah, man, I know where old boy at. You fuck with us block niggas. We don't just let somebody just hit on us like we a punching bag. Mm -hmm. So you finna get up and you finna go take that fade again is what you finna do. And if you don't, I'm finna knock your ass out. So choose it. <laughs> so I said, okay, I don't want to get knocked out by my big homie. I can't beat this nigga up. So I better lace my boots up, man. So I laced my boots out and run the fade back with the dude. I still lost again. He got the best of me, man. You know what I'm saying? But he said, I'm proud of you, man. Win, lose, or draw, you stick up for yourself, man, and don't let nobody run over you, man. You feel me? He said, that's a, he said, Sacramento, if somebody look at you like you's a, a prime lunch meat, they will eat off of you till you don't exist no more. He said, you need to stand up for yourself. From that day forward, I never looked back, and here I am, man, and I love him for that. You feel me? But yeah, man, that was one of the main reasons that I started looking at games. And then when I got a little bit older, my big homie was like, hey, man, I think you ready now. Is you ready for it? I wasn't ready. I tried to run from him. I'm going to keep a real look. Most people try to make themselves look tough on the internet. I'm keeping it real to y'all, man. I'm going to tell your boy Rocket Lope ran from him. I was being a pussy, man. You feel me? I ran from the homie like, nah, cuz. I said, put somebody on right now that's my age, nigga. I'm not fighting you big niggas. You got 22-inch arms, nigga. I said, put somebody, I said, put somebody that got 14 inch arms like me. And so my mom, with you know, I said, I'm not messing with y'all. You finna hurt and hurt me, man. You know, they said, nah, it don't go down like that. Size ain't nothing but a number, nigga. Yeah. So uh, I started chilling with the homies, ran from them to keep a long story short. So I, about about a week later, I'm wondering why the blunts keep keep getting passed to me. The the the, the, the same eyes. Next thing you know, I'm in a circle. Yeah, nigga. You've been talking like us, drinking like us. It's time, nigga. I said, wait a minute. Hold on, nigga. The big homie said, nah, you ain't running today. Today's the day. <laughs> <laughs> Hit me instantly. I got 12 stitches in two spots. So that's 24 stitches. The big homie hit me. Bam. Mm -hmm. But I was done. He said, boy, if you don't start hitting back, I'm going to start stomping you. So, boy, I got roughed up, started hitting back, woke up on my own puddle. The homie gave me a hug, gave me my first sea rag and said, now you a love, nigga. And I said, why am I love? He said, let me tell you. We from Northern California. The North Days got allies. Guess who's they allies? He said, BGF, Gemma. He said, the Bloods got allies. The white boys got the South Side for allies. He said, guess what? You a Crip. Crips don't got no allies. Cripping ain't easy, cuz. So get ready. So from there on, here we is, man, you know, the deal. So it got real grimy, man, to make a long story short, man. It looks funny. It sounds like I'm acting funny and stupid, but this is real life and it's really happening, man. I'm just trying to put it together like a funny story for everybody so you don't look like you're just trying to be the hardest man on the planet because I'm not bulletproof. I made a flesh and DNA just like you, man. Anybody can be hurt. But at first, I started off like a wimp, and they turned me into an animal, and here I am, and I have problems from that. See? So I, I can't just interact with certain people or talk to certain people because I'm still kind of got, you know, that old habit, die hard thing. Mm -hmm. 
So that's kind of where I'm at. So I kind of just stay stuck the way because I tried to quit the game banging stuff, but it's a hard habit to quit. So, it, it's, yeah, it's a hard habit to quit. Yeah, I don't know who, unless you're a gang member like me, you, you can't really feel it, but I try. But then it's like a, it pulls on me, you know? So I have to kind of like stay away from people so I don't get in trouble. And I see that's the best thing that's working for me right now. And I praise the higher person above, man, because when I interact with people, someone gets hurt most of the time, or even I get hurt. Like I said, I get hurt sometimes. I ain't bulletproof, but something usually bad happens. So I try to like stay away from people, man, and stay with my family. And it seems like that's the best way that's been going on for your nigga Rockalo for the last decade. I've been out of trouble, man. I've been locked up my whole life. For the last eight, nine years, is I've been free. Rest of my life, I've been locked up. So so uh cuz you still got a little bit more time? Huh? You still got a little bit more time? Yeah, I sure do, man. I okay, got so, time, uh, man. Okay, so what I'm about to do is I'm about to uh uh break this up. I'm I'm about to end it and then I'm about to send you another invite real quick so we can get yeah, the little part. We good. Right. We can break it up and piece it up. Go. All right, get, all right, give me a sec. All right, cuz.